Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com and in this video I'm going to show you specifically how to tape and finish an inside drywall corner. We have a whole playlist of drywall related videos, um, everything from mixing mud to hanging drywall to using a drywall lift, you know, and mudding and taping sort of thing. But we're just going to specifically break out how to do an inside corner. So uh, I've already gone ahead and pre-filled the corner. So what all that means is there was a slight gap here where the two drywall pieces met and it was larger than about an eighth of an inch. So I filled it with some mud just so it makes mudding the corner easier or applying the tape easier. So that's what you kind of see here is just the residue of, of me having done that already. And you ge generally would run around and do that to all your any gaps that are larger uh, before you start any of your uh, taping or mudding. So um, that's good and it's dry. You're going to have to wait till that dries before you apply your tape or you're just going to have a mess. So, so that's dry already. Uh, I'm going to take, always before I start, I go around just with a knife, like a four inch or a five or six inch, three inch, whatever you got, and just kind of knock off any little bits that might be sticking out or uh, little edges from a trowel or whatever before you start. Just because otherwise if you don't do that, you're going to end up with that in the new surface that you're trying to finish. So I just kind of run around, knock off any little lumps and, lumps and bumps that we have. So we've got that. We've got our uh, all-purpose mud. Now this has been thinned down and mixed for all our general mudding, but I'm going to have to thin it down even a little bit more to do the taping part. And uh, for this little corner, I'm just going to do it right here in my trowel, add a bit of water till I get the right consistency, which is, you know, a little bit runnier than a pancake type mix sort of thing. Um, if you don't get it good and wet like that, you're going to end up with some dry tapes and uh, that just ends up being a lot more work uh, for your next coat. So, so I'm going to thin it down. So you're going to need some, some mud. Um, and the reason for this, if you're just doing a small room like we're doing, the reason I'm mixing my taping mud just in my pan as I need it, is so I don't mix a whole pail if I'm using the same mud right through the whole job, I don't have a whole pail mixed to that consistency because it's too runny to use for actual coating. So, so I'll just mix what I need here. I've really, I've already done the whole rest of the room, just left this off here for the video. So, so I've got a little bit of mud in here. I'm going to uh, just got some clean water, cold water. Just going to add a little bit in here. Just mix it up. It's getting pretty good. So yeah, probably even a little thick yet. That's a little better. So you want it to be able to, you know, kind of jiggle around in the pan like that pretty loosely. Okay, so we've got our mud ready. I've got my three inch knife and I'm using paper tape. This is what I'd recommend you to use. I wouldn't use mesh or anything like that. Get your paper tape. You'll notice it has a, a slight crease or a mark in the middle and that's your fold mark. So simply just pull off the amount of tape you need. You can tape this corner right top to bottom or you can do it in pieces like I'm doing. It's not really that huge of a deal. So just fold it along that crease that's already there. Oh, I got a little bit of old dry mud right here. Okay, so it just basically gets some shape to it so that when you go to put it in the corner, it's already kind of got its shape. Now I can see uh, here's the end of the other tape I had. I want to overlap it by an inch or so. So this actual length is going to be all right. I'll just set that to the side. Now I want to apply some mud into the corner on both sides there to set this tape into. So I'm just going to load up a little bit on my knife, come up to the wall and just run it down the wall. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways you can actually apply this on there. This is how I do it. 
I uh, just make sure I've got a generous amount on there, at least an eighth, eighth of an inch thick all the way along, and right, right into the corner. Get right up to where your overlap's gonna be. Just need a little bit more there. But there, right down to the floor in this case. Okay, so you can see I was, I'm quite generous with that. You can, if you want, once you got it on there, you can kind of just smooth it out a little bit. Oops, I think I've already got it on me. Just kind of knock off the ridges, not a huge deal if you do that or not. Uh, just have a look there, looks like I rubbed a little bit off right in this one area right here. Let's make sure I load that corner up again. Take my pre-folded corner. Most times, I mean, if you're half inch to an inch off the floor, it's not a huge deal here baseboard is going to generally cover that. I just use my finger to kind of guide it back into the corner. And then you can just lightly run your knife along that corner just to make sure you've basically got it straight. Don't push too hard, that's just light, because if you push too hard you're just going to slice that tape right open. Okay, so once I've got it basically sitting where I want it, I'm going to take the same knife and just applying a moderate amount of pressure. I'm just kind of oozing out some of the mud that's back there, smoothing it out. Catch this little edge that's out there. Make sure where the two overlap closes up and meet, meets nice and tight. And same thing down the bottom. So I got my knife on about a you know 45 degree angle from the wall, applying a little bit of pressure. Okay. Oop. Stroke all the way along. Clean up that little bit out there. And you want to try to leave it nice and clean like that. Okay, so when it's nice and clean, uh, you're going to be able to come back and do your next coats without a bunch of crud in there and not a lot to knock off or anything. So you can see it's nice and smooth, not a bunch of wrinkles, and it's ready to dry. Okay, so that's applying the tape. Now, your next step is to actually apply mud over top of that tape to get your corner uh, started or finished. Um, if you want, you can do one side. I, I always do one side at a time. In uh, one of my other videos, I show using a trowel that's made to do both sides at a time. I'm not a big fan of it. That's what we showed using on that video. On this one, I'm going to do uh, one side at a time. Okay, so you can recoat this right away with your first coat of mud. Uh, you're going to use mud mixed uh, to the consistency of pancake batter, and we show that in another video that we have on the playlist that I mentioned. So this mud here is just a little bit thin for that. I'm going to add some out of the bucket here to it and I should be able to thicken it up a little bit just by doing that. So I'm just adding a little bit there. I'll just mix it together and it'll be good enough for what we're doing here today. I didn't have a lot of the taping mud left in there. If you're using actual taping mud because there are types that are for, for just taping, uh, you don't want to use that for your other coats after the taping's done. Uh, it's a lot harder to sand, it doesn't go on as nice. So, But if you're just using an all-purpose for all your coats, you can just simply do, do what I did and add it to the pan you're already working with. Okay, so I've mixed it up. You can see this is you know, just a little bit thicker. It'll, it'll roll off the, off the knife, but it takes a little bit for it to start moving. So I'll just do the, this would be first coat. On one side, I'm just going to go up higher to start at the top. Now this wouldn't matter if it's a corner, a wall corner, or the ceiling corner. Okay, so I just take and I get a little bit of mud on my trowel like that. And I get up, kind of 
put it into the corner and then stroke it away a little bit just to kind of place my mud where I want it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm leaving it quite generously thick here, about a good eighth of an inch, and uh, it's tapering out just a little bit here and we're gonna stroke that off anyway. But I wanna make sure that I've got good coverage on my, on my tape, I'm a little thin up there. Okay, some guys will just take their mud on there like this and just run it down like that. Uh, I like to get my corner, I only do my corners uh, once on each side. So I like to get the mud rubbed out just a little further. That's why I go this direction when I apply it. You're kind of putting it on. You're trying to make sure you don't get too many air bubbles in there too. So put on whatever you want. If you want to go right down to the floor, whatever. A lot of times I just do what I can reach comfortably without climbing up and down a million times. So I've got it on there. I've got it out not quite as wide as my the trowel that I'm using. This one, I believe this is a five inch. And then I just come up here and I'm gonna hold my trowel. Uh, so when I go up on the corner, I'm holding this, in this case, I'm holding this side tight and I'm leaving a space on this side. So I'm kind of putting extra pressure on, uh, in my case, the right side of my knife so that I'm leaving excess here and feathering it out to nothing on the other edge. And this takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm kind of awkward here the way I'm trying to be out of the way so you guys can see. So it's a little more difficult for me. Okay, so once I've got it relatively smooth, you can see I've got a little bit of an edge here that isn't feathered out to nothing. So I'm gonna do that same pressure on my knife and I'm gonna run down this edge just to knock that edge off. And then I'll go over the whole thing again with the pressure angled just to kind of smooth it out. And that feathering out that edge will just make it easier for you when you're sanding. If that edge is already tapering down to nothing, it's gonna make it a lot simpler. So you can see in here, I've got good coverage. I'm not seeing the tape showing up anywhere. And that's what I want. If uh, you got some ripples or bumps in the tape, it's probably gonna show up and you, you're probably gonna have to do two coats. Once the first one dries, you'll have to do another one to in order to get it to cover. So now I went down as far as I can reach. Now I'm gonna work up the wall uh, until I meet this, this same spot. So same thing, just putting it on there. Our mud's just about perfect consistency right now. I'm making sure I'm squeezing it right into that corner. I'm being pretty liberal getting it on there. Okay, so I've got it on there. I'm gonna give her a, a pass just to kind of knock off the excess. Um, again, I'm holding the knife approximately at about, you know, 30 to 45 degree angle. Trying to keep that knife angle consistent as I move up the wall so that it leaves behind the con a consistent layer. Knocking off this little edge here. Okay. Now I'm gonna make one more stroke and you notice I came down on the other one and now to come back up into that, I'm coming the opposite direction. I'm not trying to start where I left off the first time. Okay, get a nice little, nice little thing. Now, I just about always end up with a little bit of a weevil wobble there. Uh, I think you can probably see that on the camera maybe, right here. That's just where my, I lifted my knife and it leaves it just a little bit of a ridge there. Maybe you can't see it. Uh, it's just a slight little uh, ridge and that will sand out fine. But again, as you look down there, up and down, you can't see the tape showing. It's nice and flat. Uh, there's gonna be very little sanding there because there's no, you know, there's no ridge out here or anything. So that'd be my first coat on one side, okay? Um, now, I'd walk away from that corner. Don't even try to come in here and do the other side. You're just gonna mess the other one up. Okay, so leave that overnight. Come back and uh, do your second side, which we're gonna show up here on a corner that I did the other day. Okay, so up here in the corner, this is a typical situation where you've got your walls meeting the ceiling and they're all, all, good. all these inside corners need to be drywalled, or need to be mudded, I mean. Um, 
So I did these the other day. I did one side of all these corners. And this is how I would do it to speed it up, is do it this way so that I'm not messing up the other edge as I'm doing the, one, the other one. So you can see I didn't get right into the, right into the corners, but those are all gonna correct once I do my other side. So, so this kind of gives me a three-way corner to start with the next day. They've all dried. I uh, just come around with my knife again, knock off any little edges. Sometimes you get this edge on the, the side that you didn't mud. And just kind of chip that off so it doesn't end up in your mud when you're... And I'm just staying away from this right now just because I, I did that earlier today and I don't want to mess it up. So I'll show you how to do the second side now. And uh, um, the reason you can't do both sides on, on the same day because if this side isn't totally dry, when you bring your knife down, because the corner here, down here, is gonna rub against that wall, it's gonna peel uh, so the mud. It's either gonna peel the mud out of there because it's too wet, or even if it's only slightly dry, it's gonna, it might roll or crack some big cracks out of it. So, so you're best off to leave that a day, or if you need to leave it two days. If you come back the next day, and you're starting to mess with this because maybe this was thick or it's on an outside corner where the wall's colder and it's not drying, walk away from it and just leave it alone or you're just making more work for yourself. These ones should be good and dry. I'm using the same mud I used on my first side coat that I did just a second ago. And really it's the same basic principle. I'm pushing it into the corner and just kind of bringing it out about four to five inches. Just basically getting getting a layer applied to the wall. Okay, so I've got it on there. I'm just gonna shorten those up a bit because I had them a little wide for the for the trowel that I'm using, for the knife I'm using. Same idea. Now I'm putting pressure on the left side of my knife so that I'm leaving more mud on the right side. Just draw the knife right down. Get that little edge. Just like that. Now, if you start seeing some little pinholes or little pockets show up there within the first few seconds, um, then I'll just give it another stroke with the knife and it'll just knock those off nicely. If you get a little bit of mud like this on the other corner, if you're real careful, you can pull it away. If you're not careful, you're just making a mess, so just leave it till the next day. Okay, so we got that one there. Now, it's really difficult on my, to do my second corner to do all three of these at the same time because I'm trying to get right in against there. If you're real careful about it though, you can do it. So we get our mud in there because I've got a little gap from my first coat, right? Get the mud up there. I'm just doing little areas here. Usually I would do this whole three or four feet at a time, but Okay, so just get it on there. Now when I go into this corner, I just want my knife nice and clean. And I don't want to touch that corner I just did if I can avoid it. Push it in there. I'm getting a little bump in there, but that's all right. I'll get that when I sand. Stroke this corner off. There, so I got that corner. And I do the same thing with this one. You just have to be real careful because you're up against this this uh, wet part here. Now, because we did this, this is real thin. There isn't a lot of thickness to that mud, so it's not so bad. So it can be done. It just takes a little bit of practice. So get your mud in there. It's always harder working on the ceiling because gravity wants to take over. Okay, so just get that in there. That's gonna be a little awkward the way I'm doing it here for the camera. Get into my corner. Over to my other corner. Get this edge tapered, feathered out. I got a little bit here that I can fix up later. Looks like I had a screw hole here that sunk a little bit when I did that one, so I'll have to come back and work on that corner a little bit anyways. And I probably will have to do a little bit right in that very corner, just because I tried to do all three edges again on the second coat but uh, it, it definitely can be done. So. so now, like I said, this is all I would do. Uh, now I would come back and fix that and that, but 
if this all worked out perfect, this would be ready for sanding up in this area, okay? Because that's all I do. I do one, one width of this trowel each way of the corner. And as long as it ends up nice and smooth like it did here, you're good to go, a little bit of sanding, and it's all done. Okay, so one of the biggest keys with mudding, and I've mentioned this on lots of my videos, is just making sure you go along and kind of chip off anything that's dry, any little chips or little hangers that are hanging there. Because if you don't, they get in that new mud and you just have lines and streaks and everything everywhere. So work as clean as you can, you won't have any troubles. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was informative for you. And uh, if you like our channel here, please give us, click the thumbs up and give us a, uh, some notice that you like what we're doing. And you can uh, also uh, leave a comment below. You could go to the forum if you have any questions about this kind of project or anything really that is DIY related in, in your home. Just go to the forum and post your question up and we will be sure to help you from there. Uh, if you want to do a little bit extra, you can check out our Patreon page and maybe support us a little bit financially to keep making these awesome videos. But for now, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.